Uh, so anyway, so I've got a Mac and I got a Mac so I could look down my nose, at, as I was saying, down my nose at people. I used to have a Mac and then what happened, because I know you want to hear this story. What happened oh, was, um, was that it became, they became very trendy and cool. I used to have a Mac when they went trendy and mm -hmm. you know, then I was the odd one out. I was like, oh, you've got a Mac. Like, why do you have a Mac? And I'm like, well, you know, it's based on Unix substructure and blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. And they still do the same thing now, but and they still, and they still don't work for most of the things, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. But no, I'll tell you what it is, is it used to take me two and a half hours to to encode the videos, these podcasts. And I'd always be doing like Sunday night, just watching this thing. And then if I encoded it, I'd normally look at it and afterwards and then realize I'd done something wrong. I'd miss something out. Uh -huh. I had to go back into the editing software, put it in and do it again. I was like, man, you know what? So you decided I, to, to, to buy a Mac? Well, you may not know this because you're not technical like I am, but... Um, <laughs> but the new the new apple uh, the new apple uh have got an m1 they got an, they made their own chipset now so they've got this thing called mm -hmm. m1 chipset and it's like five times faster than the old macs which were about five times faster than my old pc which was six years old so basically uh i'm expecting to just encode this thing like that like that snapping your fingers in theory yeah, well, this is today's going to be the proof of the pudding. If this doesn't work, I'll you'll just you know you'll hear me crying, uh, even though it won't be recorded. You're just all the way over there. You'll you'll hear sobs and wails and gnashing of teeth. Yeah, yeah. but that that's okay. That's okay. So anyway, welcome, hi everyone, and welcome to uh, Nick's descent into madness, the episode <laughs> umpteenth. Yeah, I've been descending into madness for the whole last year. Yes, this I will be your your uh, uh, tour guide. Your tour guide. <laughs> <laughs> On the right hand side, you can see the ninth, the, the ninth ring of hell. <laughs> That's right. On the left hand side is the wall where Nick smashes his head. No, the, on the left side is still the ninth ring of hell because it's a ring. Oh yeah. Oh, that you know that makes sense now. All of course right. It is. <laughs> you know, there's no escaping it, Max. We're going to talk about ECM coffee machines today. Yeah, but uh, but I was thinking. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> now no, you had time to do your homework and uh, there's no excuses I, but although we are i just i've got amazing i'm gonna blow your socks off Ooh. uh or or should i do that next week uh, i don't know I'll think about it no i'll tell you one thing i'll tell you one Ooh. thing i'm gonna blow your I'm socks curious. off that's the that's the, the tease um but i will do soon i'll blow your socks off very soon maybe next week tune in next week to see if i will blow your socks off or not uh, okay. But I was, um, I ordered a basket from, I have to share a screen. I ordered a basket for the, uh, for the, the Breville thing. What's it called? Sage, Bambina Plus. And okay. um, because it only came with the, the double wall basket, which is for the, the pressurized. Pressurized. Filter. It's a pressurized filter. filter and it, yeah, you put ground mm -hmm. coffee in. I tried that and yeah, I couldn't get the, the taste out of my mouth fast enough um, with that. It may have been stale coffee or no, it, it may have been... No. I don't know what it was, but it wasn't. Did you good. try? Did you try the the, the coffees? Yeah, I knew you were going to ask me that. I was hoping you'd forget. No, not yet, because I look. I tried five. I had to go through five different coffees this morning. Just this morning, five, and mm. I got a headache and a buzz. You already, had to. I, is there Such any a... way? By the way, is there any way to? If you've had too much coffee, is there any way to to flush it out your system? To that because the half life is like five six hours or something, isn't it? Yeah. There's no way to 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 reduce the symptoms of going nuts. Run. Uh -huh. I am not good at that. Okay. Have you have you seen me? <laughs> have you no. seen me? I you am. Have to, uh, you have to to speed up your metabolism. So although yeah, you you could say I'm aerodynamic. Was that movie? That's a fantastic movie. It's so funny. Uh, that it's called the something thing something. Oh. The something thing something. Yes. It's I'm actually doing something funny. smart here. What's that? I am timing us. Oh, oh, now I'm going to feel, okay, just pressure. Uh -huh. um, well, that. let's just spend the rest of the podcast with me trying to remember the name of that funny movie is. Um, it's, it's a hilarious movie. <laughs> well, anyway, there's a thing with the, these guys are selling weed 
and uh, mm-hmm. and they, he goes to his weed dealer, and they're going to get into a fight with his weed dealer. His weed dealer's kind of fat. He's a, he's a bit like me. He's kind of rounded. He's not like totally like really really fat, but he's kind of like mm-hmm. he's definitely not slim. Okay, he's fat, and um, <laughs> and. And they're getting into a fight, like they're going to get into a fight. And these are like, these are two people that are like not built for fighting. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and the fat guy that the drug dealer is like, you don't want to mess with me, man. You don't want to mess with me. I might, you know, I might not look the part, but I'm built for speed. I'm aerodynamic. <laughs> it's like that. Cause you know, it's that shape, you know, aerodynamic shapes are, are not mm-hmm. sharp. They don't have sharp edges. I'm like that. So maybe I would be very good. I'd certainly be good going downhill. You know, the wind would just True. kind of just flow around me. <laughs> uh what did we get to i don't know oh what yeah so we- anyway so i ordered this i'm going to share my screen i ordered this basket from sage and i want to, and i'm outraged <laughs> i'm wow, outraged oh wow. yeah <clears throat> and i'm going to share my outrage um by i didn't take you very long no uh it doesn't take me much to get outraged i get outraged in the morning when i wake up and remember i have no hair i am outraged uh so look at this check what's in there Check what's in there. That's what they sent the basket in. Well, you, they've sent your cubic meter of air. They sent me a cubic meter of air. Uh, yeah. For a, a basket. And how much that did you pay basket. for the shipping? It, it wasn't much. It, to be honest with you, it was like five pounds for the basket, two pound fifty, I think, for the shipping. Well, it could have um, been two pounds for the basket and they could have sent it with a large letter. Well, here's the thing. I bought the, uh, I'll stop sharing that now. Um, oh God, how do I stop? Okay. I, I bought the, uh, I tried buying the basket on Amazon prime because it's free shipping because I'm cheap that way. And I think, you know, if you pay, you're paying Amazon, your yearly fee, you'll get your free shipping. You just, you, you want to buy everything yeah. in there. So little psychology works from Amazon. Well, I normally well do. Well done, Jeff. Um, and, uh, and the, so the basket arrived from Amazon which I, I Googled in there, I searched in there, you know, the Breville model number and it came up, you know, thinking me for Breville. So I, I Sage rather, oh God, why don't they just change their name and be done with it? Um, and, uh, and- Let's call and, it, let's, let's call it uh, Pier Egidio. Yeah, yeah, or not. Um, or, or not. Okay, so, let's call it not. <laughs> let's call it not. So, they, so their, their basket arrived from Amazon and mm-hmm. for the breville for the sage for the, and not I, the, yeah and i uh, and it didn't fit and it was a 54 mm-hmm. mil it was a 54 mil basket for a sage something i typed in the model number but i hadn't checked because i'm a busy and important guy i don't forget how important i am very very important. very important person who doesn't have a lot of time to check facts so mm-hmm. I, uh, so I, which you know, my, what I do for a, for a living is kind of like this scary. So I, uh, I, it's a bit like being a scientist, right? You know? Yeah, absolutely. Wing I never it. do. God, I never do reading. We don't no, ever, no, no, no. you know, there's no scientists that wing it here on this podcast. Um, so, <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah. So I just, I ordered it. I said, you know, a 54 mil Breville double, you know, a single thing, but yeah, great. I have one of those bang, bish, bosh, bang, as we say, mm-hmm. no one knows what we're talking about on other countries. Bish, bosh, bang means like, there it is. Bob's your uncle. Uh, and it arrived okay. and it didn't fit. And then I went back and checked a bit harder. And even though I typed the model number in, it had just in, in their, their intelligent search engine, it said, dad, just give him, give him the sage basket. <laughs> Give me anything, <laughs> it'll be happy. And um, because they're American. Because they're from Boston. And they're from, that was my New Jersey accent, actually. How dare you? Uh, New Jersey, Boston, come on. I, no, I can't, I can't give away everything all at once. I've got to keep something, I've got to keep the, the listeners hanging on for, <laughs> for treats in the future. Uh, I actually do have a Boston accent. It's very much like the New Jersey accent. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much it. Like, yeah, I'm from Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Boston. Uh, so, uh, so it arrives there. Basically, it was a wrong thing. It doesn't fit. It's too deep. I'm thinking to myself, why do they do that? Why Sage? Why Breville? Why Sage? Why Breville? Why do you do that? Why do you have, I mean, you've only got, <laughs> you know, the same danging 54 mil porter filter. Why is it deeper in some machines and shallower in others? That just seems I don't know. silly. I don't know. I, I, I really, it, it really, you know, it really gets to me how how hard it is because 
nobody in their right mind would use the same the same um, uh, porta filters in professional machines and uh, home machines, would they? Oh well, wait. Well, wait a minute. Gadget no, that, does it. There's a there's a yeah. Well, everybody else pretty much uses. I think. Oh, I pushed a button. I uh, uses uh, 58 mil porta filters. Um, Don't push buttons. You never know what can happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, mm. uh, well uh, there's some lovely machines out there with push buttons, like there's an ECM with push buttons, and we'll come into that in a minute. Uh, we but, flick levers. But uh, I like the levers better. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I don't know why. And then, then, so I had to send it back. Mm -hmm. uh, then, which is fine because Amazon makes that process easy. Uh, but then I, so I just went onto Sage's website. Now it turns out that there's a lot of people selling these. It turns out it's cheaper on Sage's website to get an original one. And the mm -hmm. reason for that, I think, is because they're out of stock a lot of the time. And people, and you get these ones you, that if you're not careful, they'll ship it from China. I can imagine them shipped it from China. It's the wrong one. Send it back. I'd feel really bad. I still do it though. Um, and uh, so, so I think they're out of stock a lot of the time. But anyway, they went out of stock, so I got mm -hmm. it. So fantastic. So I smacked it in with that very satisfying thunk that you always do when you change porter filters. Um, mm -hmm. And unless it's non, it, it's non rigged. In that case, it goes like. Oh, oh that's pointing. Not good. Right. <laughs> no, I get. I like the thunk. A bit like a quality German car when you close the door, it gives a good thunk. That's what you want. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and so I did that. So I put it in. I, and this morning I did a test. Now, class, this is a bit like um, this is a bit like being back at school. I've got another thing to share, another photo to share. And what we're going to do, uh, school, is we're going to put Max to the test here and see if Max can guess which one came out of the the breville bat damn damn the sage <laughs> bambino plus <laughs> why yeah the sage and this is going to be very interesting for the listeners of the podcast yeah because so, well, you're, <laughs> you're going to describe oh, it you're going to first describe it yeah okay. and then you're going to smell it smell the screen and then right, 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 to, right. and then you're going to lick the screen to get an idea of the flavor no nah, that's too much and <laughs> Okay, all right. So I had to, to hit the share button. I should get pretty good at this by now. God, I don't know if these damned Zoom things. You would have thought I know what I'm doing. Hold on. All right, you see it? Oh, okay. Describe right. the top and the bottom. So what we've got is a uh, vertical. We've got two cups, top and bottom. Yep. And uh, describe what you see there, Max. So at the top, you have uh, uh, a coffee that has been spilled, <laughs> and the, yes, I and it's swear. got uh, and it's got tiger stripes, and um, foam on top mm -hmm. that is quite thick mm -hmm. and I, I noticed that there is actually some uh, bigger bubbles in the in the in the in the crema mm -hmm. and uh, that is a bit odd mm -hmm. for two reasons uh, the first one is that you swear that the first one and not the second one mm. And the second reason is that the, the the bubbles they mean nothing because that just mean the big bubbles they mean just that uh, the the coffee dripped in in drops uh, yeah. in, in that one. Right. And the second one, the one at the bottom, is that is more uniform, mm -hmm. and uh, it doesn't look like it's been spurred. But that's probably the one that you poured before because I see that there is a higher trace of crema there that uh, uh, that went down. Um, the top one has tiger stripes, the bottom one doesn't. So I want to say, because otherwise you wouldn't ask me, probably the top one is the one with the pressurized porta filter, and the bottom one is the one with the non pressurized porta filter. I have to say, just right off, that neither one's pressurized because uh, I got the new basket. So I, this was the same coffee, the same grind, everything. Just one was in the Sage Bambino, and one was in the, in the Gaggia. Ah, so Gaja, Gaja and uh, okay, then it's easy. Uh, the Gaja is at the top and the Bambino is at the bottom. Yeah, that's right. Wow, because you were like, you did that all that scientific and you're coming to the wrong conclusion. I was like, ah, oh, this is going to be painful for you. But uh, as soon as I said that, it was interesting. You were like, how did like you knew right away? Yeah, absolutely. The top one with the tiger stripes is the mm -hmm. is from the Gaja, and it's only I didn't really swirl it. I just moved it um, without taking much care. To, to take the photograph. 
and uh, the bottom one came out of the, which looks a little bit more uniform. It's also a little bit, there's a little bit less of it uh, because the, the uh, 54 mil portafilter basket wouldn't take the same amount of coffee. Oh, of course, yeah. So I could have redone the whole experiment with a different basket in the Gagia, but then I'd be wasting coffee. And it yeah. was like 4.30 in the morning and I wanted to drink the damn coffee. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. so you know, I wasn't going to do that. Um, but yeah, so the... Changed, the huh? Did you change the grind? No. Aha, uh -huh, that's why. So when you, when you have a difference in the size of the, of the, of the filter, yeah. you're actually changing the speed at which the, the, the water goes through. Uh, if you have the same pressure... Uh -huh. Uh, and the same flow rate, so let's say uh, 32 to 36 grams in 30 seconds, uh, roughly 60 gram, 60 ml a minute. Mm -hmm. 60 ml a minute, they go at a certain speed through a large portafilter. Mm. They go much faster through a smaller portafilter, the same flow rate. Mm -hmm. It's a Venturi effect. So maybe I didn't do it. I didn't. I haven't done it justice. Maybe I have to do a few more experiments. You have to slow down the flow rate in that case. You have to grind finer. If you go to a smaller um, basket, well, you have to grind finer. It's smaller, and it, but it's it's also it's a different kind of dynamic because it's taller and thinner. But because it's uh, it's taller because it's not more narrow. Mm. So if you have any and you have also a different amount of coffee that goes in there. So there is, a, there is an equation that I can give you, uh, but not on top of my head. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> the but basically, it's... Um, do I look like the kind of guy that looks at equations, Max? Uh, well, I, that's what I do when I, when I change different columns yeah, in a... Don't in punish me. Don't punish me. But, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll grind finer and maybe try some, tr some different things. But do you want to know what it tastes like with different... Do you know Absolutely, what, I'm curious. Does yes. that make any sense then? Do you know what the taste difference was like? I would expect the, the second one being uh, being a little more watery, so more acidic probably and under extracted versus the first one because you have more water going through, mm. but it doesn't interact with the, with the coffee for the same amount of time. Um, I hadn't thought about it that way. It certainly was more watery. Uh, so the body so was I different. It didn't have a sure. good mouthfeel. Um, mm -hmm. And on the first one... So, oh, by the way, the kind of coffee I used for this, I didn't want to use fancy coffee, uh, particularly. So oh. I used um, a bag of Waitrose uh, Union Revolution beans. So it's sort of okay. reasonably dark roast, you know, typical kind of, I say typical supermarket. It's, it's a higher quality supermarket bean, but it's still like kind of a regular supermarket bean that you get at yeah. a supermarket, <laughs> you know, so. Supermarkety. Um, Supermarkety. So, because the idea of this is not to try to 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 um, you know evaluate some you know that some sort of geisha beans or something from a no, this is like a Bambino Plus machine that we're looking at here. So let's go and grab what typical people might grab, which down the supermarket, something that's uh, that's a half decent a half decent roast, and that's what I put through. And I use the same grinder, so we use the same um, flat burr uh, grinder, whichever one it is that I've got. Mm -hmm. Which one is that, Max? What grinder have I got? I can never remember. <laughs> Eureka Mignon or Eureka Specialità? No, it's not a Mignon. It's a, it's something else. Specialità, Silencio. No, no. It's something. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, so that, but that, that big, you know, shop grinder that I've got. So mm -hmm. uh, we used a decent flatbed grinder. We used, um, we used the uh, same beans. Uh, and I make sure that the thing was purged and whatever, same grind setting, that's it. Um, and the, the flavor difference was actually the, the as you would imagine, the, that Gaggio had actually produced a really good espresso. Out of that. I was really happy with the, with the taste of that this morning. It was, yeah, you can tell you know, it's, it's well extracted. Yeah, yeah, I, I did a great job. Thank you, Max. I, I appreciate you saying that. Um, <laughs> and uh, the other one, the other one, um, like, okay, it was, it, it was, Definitely better than it was. Definitely better than um, than you know, sort of like a I don't know a bad coffee. I don't know where where you get a bad coffee from, but it mm -hmm. wasn't a bad coffee. But it it lacked the complexity, and not that it was like a not that that particular bean is super complex, but it lacked the um, it lacked uh, any it, it lacked the balance. If I want to say that right, of mm -hmm. the 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 um, shot from the gagia. 
And it also had a slightly bitter aftertaste to it. It just kind of had a, I don't bitter, it, yeah, it was bitter. There was this, this bitterness that, that, mm. that kind of followed through in it, which wasn't so nice. So I was really, I was really disappointed. But here's the shocker. Here's the real shocker is I'm going to give it to you. Even though I said I wasn't going to, I can't resist. I'm, you know, I'll probably forget okay. next week. Is that I've got a tiny little Nespresso machine that I'm using to test those beans from um, the, the capsules from that uh, Belgium company. I said they were Dutch last week. They're Belgian. Sorry. Um, so these uh, <laughs> they sent me and 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 just in full disclosure, they sent me all their capsules and things for free. So I haven't paid them for it. Um, and yeah. they're on free, but they help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, they also haven't asked me to to say anything, and they don't know what I'm saying, or I don't. Yeah, I don't run anything by them, so I say whatever I feel about it. Uh, and and I ran through because um, this is why I had my five shots. I ran through three of their capsules through that Nespresso machine, and the Nespresso machine is like a, the cheapest one I could find. It's like a magic mix. It's a little, I think it's a little pixie it's called or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's like 73 pounds slash dollars. Um, okay. And it's a nice little machine. And um, and it, it, they were delicious. They were really good. I'm, I, I don't even remember what, what capsules I put. One of them was an Ethiopian. And, okay. and you got a lot of fruit coming out of it. Not complexity, not this, and the, but definitely a, a fruity taste. The other couple, I can't remember what they were. I only one was amaretto, which I was really trying not to taste because I had an amaretto thing from an espresso thing we were testing before and it made me physically sick. So, yeah. yeah. But that was just was really bad. It was really bad, right? This yeah. amaretto was quite nice. I gave it to my wife to test. I said, what, what flavor do you think this is? And she went almond. Uh, but we both liked it. And yeah. the thing is, well, it is almond. Amaretto is actually made uh, out of bitter almonds. Oh, is it? Um, I had no idea. I said, "Don't yeah. be silly." It's all no, no it's bitter almonds. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. absolutely. Who knew? Well, you knew obviously, <laughs> but I didn't know. Um, so, so it was actually it was very subtle. It was very subtle. The fl I'm, do you know? I'm, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep that Nespresso machine. I really think I am. I'm going to wait another week just to be sure. I'm not gone completely crazy, but I tell you something, yeah. if I don't want, if I'm going out and I, and what, you know, and I'm, and I'm, I don't want to turn on the machine, wait, grind something da da da. I would be, I should be quite happy to take a, a, a capsule, pop it in and just have a quick coffee. It takes all of about 30 seconds to make a coffee. Yeah. It's, and they're actually quite good. The, the the some of the the capsules are quite good uh, some of the capsules are atrocious and yeah there's there's no saving of them but some of them are actually quite valid and um i there is actually we, since that i don't know why i started almost started speaking in italian but anyway let's forget <laughs> about that <laughs> Uh, since the patent for that machine has expired, for those capsules has expired, you can actually buy uh, the fill your own capsules. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've, the, I've, there I've are seen capsules. Those. That are, I've heard yeah, of there those. are they are reusable, and uh, I would actually do that and see how how much how far away are are the the coffee that you extract from 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 that. How far away uh -huh. it is from, uh, from from one that you start from a normal coffee machine? It will be obviously different, but mm. I'm not sure. It will It'll be, be interesting to see. I'm different. I'm really enjoying this little journey I'm going on of trying these different flavored coffees, and because uh, I never would have tried them, um, and I, I I still quite like the flavored coffees. I haven't found myself reaching for them because I haven't really. Do you know what? The, so the flavored coffees, are, they've come pre-ground and they sort of come in banana and mm -hmm. all sorts of rum and, and other things like this and raspberry. But they're actually Ooh. very good in the afternoon for making like a French press because uh, mm -hmm. they're very light. It's very light. But I haven't found myself reaching for those particularly a lot. Um, mm. But I do, I can see other people would do, but, but not, not, not necessarily for me. But these capsules that they've sent me are so convenient and you know, um, I'm cheap. Is what I can I tell you? I've got a cheap Magi Mix Nespresso machine and some of these capsules, and I'm good to go. Yeah, but I'm I mean, not, of course, because I still want to have my ridiculously expensive coffee. 
Of course, but uh, you know these are good when you when you when you travel, for example. Because I remember when um, when we my family we used to travel somewhere, we would take our coffee machine with us. Yeah, it, it, I mean it was a Gaja Classic or a, a, a Gaja um, uh, Espresso, one of those. Mm-hmm. But still we would take our coffee machine with us. If you have an espresso machine that I used to have, mm-hmm. just take that. Yeah. Just take that one and you go. Off you go. It's, it's small enough um, as long yeah. as you don't. The only thing is the, the, the back of it. I asked, um, asked my wife what she, what she thought of the looks of it. And mm. asked, in fact, I'll tell you what I did. So we lined up the Gaggia Classic, which she really likes. She's, mm-hmm. she's a big fan of that even though she's got terrible taste in coffee and just uses cheap <laughs> beans and doesn't, you know, grind them properly. And I watch it come out too fast and I cringe. She likes it that way. She likes her burned bitter coffee in an Americano and says it's good. That's fine. Okay. It's for her. You Fair know. enough. Um, and Who are you to judge? Well, I obviously, I, I do judge. I, I think people should judge. <laughs> I think they're all listening, but no, don't judge people. No, do judge people. Have an opinion. You know, that's what I want. <laughs> There's not enough judging in the world. What we need to do is judge more people. Um, right. And, <laughs> and, and I'm not, I'm, it's sleek. It looks modern. It fits in with any kitchen. And um, she said, no, you it can doesn't. Find see the, she said, I said, why don't you like this? Look, look how small. She said, you know, it's a coffee machine. So you bring somebody in and you can kind of say, look, I can make you a good coffee. Here's my coffee machine. Whereas with the Nespresso, she said, it doesn't look like a coffee machine. It looks like a toaster. <laughs> and you can't see, and you can't see the, uh, you can't see the, uh, the, the, uh, the water tank at the back. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, that's, kind that's of a actually thing. a thing. Yes. I, I got frustrated more than once because it's at the back and you don't see it. Yeah. Then you go and you start making a coffee and you go, and that's when it goes out of water and um, there's not you know much what? you can do because you're it. Then now. as I said, it just keeps, does it, what does it do? Does it just like dry heave for, for 20 seconds or what? Does it stop? Um, no, it doesn't stop. You have to stop it manually and refill the, 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 the water reservoir and then yeah. decide if you want to keep using the same, the same capsule Ew. or throw it and use, and use another one and throw the, co- the half coffee you made. Uh-huh. Because okay. that's when you find out. You don't find out before because, you know, let's face it. Who looks be- behind the coffee machine if there is enough water before making a coffee? Yeah, you're strange. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I, 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 <laughs> I look. I forgot that for the listeners, I was raising my hand. I, I, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do. I mean, am I strange? Pro- possibly. Yeah, probably it's going to happen. I do know that on the on the Gadget Classic, of course, the water tank is visible from the front. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. visible, but it's it's of a color and uh, it it's of a color that doesn't doesn't let a lot of light go through, it's so you don't really see inside. Well. You've got to really look carefully. Yeah, and that's why lots of people actually put LEDs in there, which is oh. probably one of the few modifications that I actually agree with. What do you mean one of the few? Surely you agree with all of them. Uh, I agree with modifications that change the, the how do you deliver the water into the coffee, but these are just snazzy things to to do. And I, I, sometimes I see people just putting LEDs oh, under the coffee kind of machine. Thing. It's like it's like putting putting neon yeah, lights under that. your car. It doesn't make it go faster or better or anything. It are just sure? puts a yes. It just puts a big oh. flag on on top of your car for police to stop you and check if your car is legal. I had uh, but my hey, first job. Who am I? My first job, I got at nine years old. Nowadays, that would be child labor. In my <laughs> day, this is going to be Nick's old ranty, ranty old man podcast. Yeah, in my uh, day. That's what that's what it is, isn't it? It's, it's become that way. Sorry, sorry, everybody. <laughs> it's okay. Um, in my day, uh, it's what we call having a work ethic. Um, and uh, my mom wouldn't give me pocket money, or she did. I think it was two p or something. But if I wanted to earn oh, wow. any real money, oh yeah. Uh, if I wanted any real money, I had to go out and work. Mm-hmm. So uh, she'd take me Saturday mornings down to the motorbike shop and I would clean motorbikes and things like that. And they were very, they were a nice crowd. And, but they used to, I was a new guy. I was nine years old. Right. So what do I, I knew nothing to clean the motorbikes, uh, keep them clean. And, um, and, uh, they used to have jokes in me all the time. 
And one of the jokes they told me is when I, some bikes came in with, with stripes on them, uh, you know, mm -hmm. little racy stripes. I said, I said, why, you know, why did they change the paint jobs? And they said, well, they've done some, it's all about aerodynamics and stuff. And they found that painting those stripes and them makes them go faster. And I believed them. And then they found that so funny between them, which I didn't realize. They then sent me down to the paint shop, the local paint shop. Mm -hmm. They said, um, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go with this whole theme. We want to be a shop all about, you know, stripes and speed. And that's what it's about. Go get some stripey paint. So they sent me down to the paint shop <laughs> with some money to ask for stripey paint. And I went down. But the funny thing was, is that I insisted to the guy and the guy yeah. had to go look up in his catalog. He didn't, he, like, he didn't realize it was a joke. And he was looking up in his catalog. He said, I can't find it. Can you just go back? Because there's no mobile phone. He couldn't call him. I had to run back to the shop and say, the guy's looking through his catalog. He can't find his stripey paint. Those guys were just in hysterics. I'd go back again and say, they, they definitely see it's black and white stripey paint. The black stripe's thicker than the white stripe. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I, I, have sent, uh, I have sent a guy um, to buy a bucket of current. A bucket of what? Current. Current? Yeah. You mean like as in electricity? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Did he, did he get it? <laughs> no. <laughs> he came back and said, hey, did, were you joking with me? Uh-huh. <laughs> I had a... Okay, let's finish this. Let's finish this. Okay, so... Yeah. Um, next, next, we're going to go and buy a bottle of elbow grease. Elbow grease, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I've got, I can beat everybody on this game because I have got, mm. and, and I, I can't say who it is because it's somebody who might be known to people on this podcast. Um, but I have got, I have got the ultimate prank, which I did on somebody a number of years ago. And they, uh, they have never, ever, ever in 15 years, let me go, was I, I did this, forgiven me for it. Um, I'll tell you another time. I'll tell you after the podcast. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So she, she For listeners, you will never hear about you'll it. You'll never know. Um, until Max spills the bean on the next Max podcast. tells so you next tuned. week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so we've got this, uh, so the, the, I love this little espresso machine. I think mm -hmm. I'm going to sell the Bambino. I'll do some more testing on, it. I've still got some more testing and some filming. And yeah. Stuff. I don't think you're, 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 you're there yet. I think, I think you still need to, to tune it in. Um, I think that the extraction of the, that shot that you showed me uh, is not um, is not a, a peak, not yet. It's not the best I've got out of it yet. Yeah. Okay, all right. What I'm going to do is I can take some of that uh, flavored coffee and put that into the porta filter and run. Do I run that through the pressurized porta filter? Right? Pressurized. I will run it through the pressurized. Okay. If it's a uh, coarse grind, yeah, pressurized porta filter. I'll do that. Try. Um, I'll report. I'll report back next week. I mean, considering that this week we spent the entire podcast in the intro. We've not actually talked, and our time yeah. is up. <laughs> we have been at these for uh, 37 minutes now. Yeah, I think we should wrap up this podcast about ECM. Yeah. Um, and By not talking about it. And talk about ECM. I, it wasn't week. me. This time it wasn't me. I, I don't know. how. Where did the time go? I'm pretty sure you talked the entire time. Absolutely, as usual. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I know, so, I talk a lot. <laughs> God. Wait, hold on a second though. Have you been using, let me ask, the Nespresso mm -hmm. Virtuo um, yes. system? Have you used, have you been using it at all? I've used it to, to test, to try some of the, um, some of the pods. Yeah. And uh, once I was done with it, put it finally, away. I put it away because uh, I really liked it. You didn't though, did you? I loved it. Absolutely loved it. You're shaking it. your head. You're, you yeah, know. please, 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 please take it away from me. Please no, I did not away. like it. No, no. Yeah. Do you think, because I'm so surprised, I can't understand why Nespresso have, are, are releasing capsules on their new system, which are inferior in taste to the capsules that third parties are releasing on the old system. I don't I have a it. couple of ideas for that. The first um, one is that people are not interested in, in flavor, but they're interested in features. Mm. So a, a coffee machine that reads automatically the amount of coffee 
the amount of water to put through the the capsule uh, it looks fancy it, it's not you don't have to press anything it does everything automatically i think that's the selling point of that machine so instead of improving the flavor they've actually improved the experience mm. they put some effort into the whole milking thing apparently i just didn't buy one with the frothing milk thing the, mi the milking thing was automated fro automated frothing yeah they got a frothy milk maker thing it's called a i think it's called a frothy milk thing so they have one that's called uh, Areocino, which is that's actually the, good. That's basically Latin for that, frothy milk thing. Yes, but that is not what they have on coffee machines. So on the coffee machines, they actually have a steaming thing, a steaming oh, do system. They? I think so. I mean, some of them are very expensive. Don't, let's let's look it up yeah. right now. What are, don't uh, are don't hold my word for that. But I think they have a, a, a steamer and an automated frothing system that literally is um, is a very ancient design that uh, was used for um, uh, blowing ink out of a out of a, um, out of a pot. So it's you know sprayers where you have a, a pot at the bottom of the sprayer and then air goes through it and picks up some of the ink and throws it. And it works the same for milk. So you have um, a pipe that sucks the milk mm -hmm. and a steam and a steam pipe that goes into the steaming chamber. Mm -hmm. Steam and milk mix together and uh, frothy milk comes out. Isn't that what um, Gaugia does in some of their- Yeah, their it's machines? ancient. It's an ancient technology. It's Why nothing, do they do nothing that? It looks, it looks so bad. It's automatic. It doesn't require any skill. It, it, it's bad. I tried it. It's actually bad. It's, there's, there's no saving you. But <laughs> it's done. I mean, it's like the Panarello. People don't want to spend the need and don't want to spend time in learning how to froth milk. Look, they hold want, on a second. They want it ready made. I, I totally I get that, right? I, yeah, of course. That makes total sense. Um, and you know, the, the, the Bambino Plus did a pretty decent job with a exactly. with steam one to do it automatically. Why is it so why is it so popular? Because it's a cappuccino maker, like the American the, 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 the American woman uh, Martha Stewart, I think, is uh, that that uh, mm -hmm. sorry, that um, cooks eggs in it. Oh god. Oh yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha, uh -huh. no, but we're not, we're not gonna go there. Eggs. Oh, actually, I think we should because I've seen oh. James Hoffman doing it and they both yeah. do it wrong. Yeah, I you saw the, steam... I saw the video. I didn't want to watch it. I, it's it's heresy. You can do heresy. it. I have done it on the gadget. Heresy. And I'm going somewhere, but I just didn't do it again because I didn't feel like it. Oh, okay. You can actually, because what we do for, for making creamy eggs, for making a, a, an egg-based cream. Uh, for example, mm -hmm. when you're making carbonara, mm -hmm. what you do is you mix cheese with eggs and um, cooking water, and then you mix it, stir it in with the pasta. Mm -hmm. you, you beat them up together, cheese and, cheese and eggs. You, you stir it with the pasta, adding a little bit of cooking water, and the, the starch release from the pasta makes it creamy. But you don't cook it. Uh -huh. You make it go at 60 degrees. If you go between 60 and 65 degrees with eggs, you actually get this creamy texture because you denature some of the uh, some of the proteins, but not all of them. So you don't denature the albumin that makes it go thick, mm -hmm. that makes it go rubbery. Mm -hmm. So if you if you manage to get to the right point, and to do that you add a little bit of milk, then you can get a creamy, fluffy cream that you can put on toast for example but it would be a, it would be a cream it wouldn't be um cooked eggs it would be semi-cooked eggs they would be at 60 65 degrees very difficult mm. to do mm. and you can inc you can incorporate air in it so Look, I'm somebody i am, who takes I am my, trying to do that I, I take my scrambled eggs very very seriously i'm not even joking and mm -hmm. uh, i simply wouldn't uh, I, I wouldn't allow that to happen in my kitchen it's not scrambled eggs well, any, I don't. Eggs. I wouldn't call that scrambled eggs. I would call that. Uh, I don't know. I have to come eggs. up with something because it's a new thing that I'm inventing right now. Yeah, I would. And I just I, declared it to the world. Yeah. Well, okay. Patent it, but too late now. It's out there. 
Um, well, I came up with it first. Yeah, you can have the credit, just not the money. So this whole thing, this Nespresso, look, I'm on their website and they mm -hmm. are, and they've got a machine here for 149 pounds, mm -hmm. RRP 249 pounds it's on a special price, uh, which is the Virtio Plus uh, with the Aerochino. That's basically the machine that we got plus an Aerochino. And the Aerochino yeah, is a separate just thing. On the side. It yeah. sits separately on the side. I can't see one where they've got it all built in together. There was something, I think, but I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. They, they have a, a, a milk reservoir on the side, but maybe I'm wrong. What I want to know is what, what, why are these machines so expensive compared to, to just the cheapest machine? I mean, I, I think I got ours for, I'm going to say 100 quid. I think it was, yeah, Virtuo Plus, special price, 100 pounds, normally 200. Okay, mm -hmm. so I got it for 100 pounds. And they go here to double that, the Virtuo Chrome. It's got nothing, it's got 219 pounds, right? Mm -hmm. It's got nothing, it's, just, it's the same. I don't know, what, what does it do differently? Probably Why would nothing. I spend all that extra money? Nothing, because the coffee that, that goes in anyway is no good. So the coffee that comes out, it wouldn't be very good anyway. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's the same system, right, that makes the coffee. So, mm -hmm. but people spend like this. I've seen them even more than this. I, I don't, don't think why. that a uh, lot of people buy those big ones unless they really, really want to show off. But yeah, uh, they've got some limited editions one here. So, I mean, look, I, I have no idea why. I mean, maybe, mm. maybe it's just the materials used, but the materials and the ones that we used were, that we had wasn't, you know, wasn't the best plastic, but it was nice quality plastic. Yeah. Yeah. So I've no idea what people pay more than this, but so if you want to have, if you want to have an espresso and you want to, to, to make um, a milky based drink out of it, you can't buy one with a steam wand. I guess that goes against their whole, that goes against the whole thing of like push a button and it works. Um, but that's what mm -hmm. the sage, the, the sage, <laughs> that's what sage has tried to do with the Bambino and they do it quite, they do it quite well. Yeah. But, you know, I still say I, I would go with, for me right now, out of those three machines, the Nespresso Virtuo, the Bambino mm -hmm. Plus, <clears throat> or the old, cheapest of the lot, Nespresso Original, where you can put mm -hmm. third-party capsules in. By a long shot, it's that original cheapest machine. Absolutely. By a long shot, for me. Absolutely. I, I agree with you. I mean, that Bambina Plus is 400 spondulis, which is pounds, which is dollars-ish or which euros. Which is a lot. Which is a, it's 100 quid less than a Gaggio. That's all. So I would either say, look, forget about the Bambino. If you want, I mean, okay, it looks nice and all the rest of it. Um, mm. Actually, I wouldn't say forget about it. Look, if you want to have, if you want to get into making your milky base drinks, if, you, if, you're, if you're predominantly making cappuccinos or things like that, and cost is a factor and you want something that looks good it's going to be not take up much space and i suppose if the coffee isn't perfect yeah you're going to pour a bunch of milk and neutralize it in a way maybe it's not such a big deal mm -hmm. then okay all right then it's probably got its space but i just feel like what a, a lot of money for not great coffee and the build quality is only so so on it mm -hmm. yeah that's what i think but it's uh it's a, it's a battle between features and capabilities yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly what it is. It's features versus capabilities. And the Kajia, the Gaggia Classic doesn't look great next to it. It looks a bit blocky oh, and the okay. switches on the front. Well, okay, so according to my wife, she likes the buttons on the Bambino. She does not like the buttons on the Gaggia Classic. She says it's, it's all blocky and it doesn't look good. Hmm. Or, wait, wait a minute, maybe she's talking about me. Uh, <laughs> could be could be you need a paros uh, you need a gadget pass. paros why because it's, it, it has got uh pushy buttons buttons at the tops no she likes the pushy buttons i don't like the pushy buttons i like i like visceral levers actually and this we'll talk about next week so we'll have we'll end this up and then we'll talk about the, the yes the, the, the uh, ecm so next week ecm we're not going to talk about it well, it's going to be a very long podcast. So yeah. um, the leave, the, but the whole thing about those, I'll just say, is that as you move up the the class 
on the on the ECMs. First of all, build quality is amazing, but they got some with levers on them. And mm-hmm. I'm a sucker for levers. I do not like steam things where you push a button, and I do not like steam things where you twiddle a, a, a knob. The whole twiddling a knob thing, mm-hmm. I have no who invented that. <clears throat> like you slow, you have to twiddle the knob to get it all the way on and to get all the way off again. What is that about? Because- because they, they use needle valves and it's the, the easiest way to use, uh, to build a needle valve is with a, with a knob. A twiddly knob. Because, eh? A twiddly knob. Yeah, because you can actually, especially in the big machines, you can tune the, the amount of steam that comes out. So you can, you can go higher, lower. I can actually do it in the gadget, to be honest. Uh, I can, I can uh, adjust the amount of steam that, that it puts out. While with um, with the push lever, which I had in the um, in the in the Oscar in the Oscar two, you can still do it, but it's a bit difficult because you have really to find the, the right point. To be honest, I did like the the push lever in the in the Oscar, but it's a more sophisticated system, mm. and it's uh, more costly. Well. I mean, if you okay, maybe the cost is a factor, but I have to say that I'm going to blow the logic apart for a second because mm-hmm. if you want to have uh, variable steam pressure, mm-hmm. that means you must have a higher amount of steam pressure and a lower amount of steam pressure. And at the lower amount of steam pressure, it should still be steaming your milk. So that means you're going from steaming your milk slower to steaming your mm-hmm. milk full power, right? That's, yeah. Do you agree with my logic so far? Yes. Okay. So that means that the fidelity between steaming your milk at a slower, let's say, let's take a Gagia Classic Pro mm-hmm. as a lower rate steam thing, right? Because it's, it's about 30 yep. seconds to, to, to steam uh, versus your Oscar, which is like, you know, a half a second or something, right? <laughs> which is, not, okay, yeah. no, seriously, it's, about, it's probably about five, five or six seconds. Yep. Yeah, fair enough. So, um, so you've got 30 to five seconds and your, you've got fidelity range is somewhere between that. Now, mm-hmm. here's my thing. If you're going to go to the five second p- level of power, right? You with me? If you're going to go there by twiddling your knob to the max, that doesn't give you enough time to introduce other levels of power. You're either at the five second or you're not at the five seconds. You can't say, I'll be at five seconds for two seconds and then go back down to a, you know, I don't see any point to it. You're either good enough that you can put it on for five seconds and you've made your perfect milk, which is what good baristas can do. Um, or you're not good enough, in which case take the 30 seconds. I don't understand the need to, to, to move it up and down. Well, it's, it can help uh, when, when you start steaming, for example, because when you start steaming, if, you, if, it's, uh, if you just open the flange completely, uh-huh. it will bubble a lot. So you, you will introduce too much air. Oh, okay. So I, I don't know. I, I like to be able to, to increase it gently. Then once you're there, you're there. Then that, that's it. But uh, I like the fact of increasing it gently. Oh, you increase it a little bit more gently and then you go to full. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I thought I had some good logic, but now you've un- undone me. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> I will. I'll stick with it. I'm actually very happy sticking with uh, I mean, I make um, mostly hot chocolates with my steam wand with some nice cacao powder. And uh, and that's what I use it for. And I'm very happy to wait 30 seconds. Um, mm-hmm. I got no problem. Which with that. actually let's let's give a full disclosure. Really, in a Gaja classic is not 30 seconds. It's more like three minutes to steam mm. to temperature takes forever how much how much milk are you putting in that it's not three minutes for me i put about um i don't know uh 150 ml 100 yeah i put much less in. i put the minimum amount in in order because i put so i i when i'm making a hot chocolate shot Mm -hmm. i make shots of it the way you make this oh here's a uh here's like a it's like a bonus tip for those that have made it to the end of the podcast because (laughs) if you're still if you're still still here you're you know yeah yeah you're either i don't know not listening falling asleep whilst yeah or something but anyway the um here's the tip if you go and get some nice proper cacao and so i would suggest like and that if you go to a a specialist chocolate Mm -hmm. maker uh, chocolate what tea. ratio do you suggest first of all sorry what what ratio 
Well, I'm talking about the type of cacao you get first, because you don't want to get okay. chocolate powder that's mixed with a lot of sugar and that's mixed with a lot of milk powder. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about cacao, so which mm -hmm. has got a lot of health benefits to it. And so if you go and get something, if you go and look up, say, Barry Calbo, C-A-C-A-L-L-A-B-E-U-T or something like that. No, wait, Barry Calbo. Um, they're one of the largest in the world chocolate um, mm -hmm. uh, 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 <clears throat> chocolate traders and, and, and importers if you go um get something from them it'll be 100 percent cacao so it'll be no sugar no milk products it'll be organic it'll be fantastic it'll be very rich it'll be a little bit bitter but then you can add your own sugar as you to your taste and you mm -hmm. can slowly reduce the amount of sugar you have because the sugar does take away from it. anyway the point is you put <laughs> um about two or three big heat teaspoons in the bottom of a of a small glass heat up your glass first then put um, quite a lot, more than you think, of this caca powder in the bottom, and then pour a little bit of hot water in, just a little bit, and you, you mix, you stir it in to make a paste. So you know you've got this right when you've, when you've made it a paste. Mm -hmm. And then once then you take your hot milk and you put just again, you've got a probably like a, a five ounce glass, so a small glass, the same as a, as a proper sized cappuccino cup. That's how okay. much we're talking about. So you've got You've got a good chunk of cacao in the bottom, a little bit of hot water that just turns it into a paste, and then a small amount of milk that you can put on the top of that. And you, so I steam the milk because that's how you get the, you stretch it like you would make for a latte, not like mm -hmm. a cappuccino, but a latte type of milk. And then you slowly stir that in, preferably with a little mini whisk, and you whisk it all into that. It makes an incredible, rich chocolate drink like you cannot ex explain and it is healthy very very healthy full of uh, poly poly polyphenols and uh, things that are very good for your cardiovascular system things that are very good for your brain yeah mm -hmm. and it tastes like hot chocolate it's amazing okay i actually i i i do it i just steam i, I mix the uh i put cocoa powder at the bottom of the of the steaming jug mm -hmm. add a little bit of milk make a paste with it mm -hmm. try to try to mix it as better as i can the best i can which is nearly impossible really because they don't really mix mm -hmm. and then add more milk and uh, use the steam one to to homogenize the thing and uh, froth it a little bit yeah but you can uh, when i tried it for some reason my chocolate turned pink uh, if you want really good, if you want really good, uh, a really good twist on the hot chocolate, which is even healthier, get some beetroot powder. It's cheap as chips. Buy a mm -hmm. half kilo from Amazon or something for nothing. Put one teaspoon of beetroot powder in there, and it'll turn the whole thing pink. Which is another nice way to put it in a glass. And then if you're making yeah. some, you've got this pink, and it's and it, it actually the beetroot sweetens it. And you think beetroot? Why would I put beetroot in with my with my hot chocolate? But actually, it it sweetens it a little bit, so it means you put less sugar in. And it turns into this amazing color of pink, which is really kind of cool. But try it with the hot water first, a little bit of hot water, mm -hmm. steam the milk separately, and then you can get a little whisk, like little mini whisks. You can't really do it with a spoon. You do need a whisk, and you need to whisk hard for like a minute, hard. That's and why I, I, I like the steam one to, to mix it, the, the whole thing. Yeah, you're good. Okay, that's a, yeah. That's the lazy way. It's the lazy way. It's the lazy way. <laughs> All right. So do you, just a matter of interest, did you uh, do your homework on the ECM? Did, we, did you come yeah. prepared? Fantastic. Yeah. And then we said, so and then we didn't do it. We didn't talk about it. We didn't do it. Yeah. Next week. <laughs> did we say that last week? Yeah. And the week before? Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. But this time we mean it. Next week it's we're going to talk ECM. Because you know what? I have to actually, I'm actually itching to go and buy uh, a, a new shiny machine. So we have to get to the bottom of it. We can do ECM. What are we going mm -hmm. to talk about? ECM, we've got, uh, I think we have to talk about Profitech. Profitech, we need to talk about Profitech. Uh, Rocket. Yeah, Rocket. Uh, oh, oh. Um, La Spaziale. Okay, oh, they went on my list. La Spaziale. Okay, we'll put them on. And uh, who's that other one I want to talk about with the Mara X? Um, um, Lelit. Lelit, yeah. Lelit. They've got some interesting stuff coming out now, actually, quite, quite interesting. Mm hmm uh i'm not going to put ranchilio on there i'm going to tell you right now i'm not putting ranchilio on there what else have we got to, to to look at that's quite a bit isn't it i think it's already, <clears throat> it's already quite, quite a, few. a lot because i mean 
of stuff that is affordable. If you go crazy, then there is Slayer, there is... Uh, no, no, no. I'm not going to do any of that. I can't, afford, I can't afford the Victoria Arduino thing that we were, the Eagle yeah. One Prima we were hoping Could, was going to come I in. Mean, the... If money was not a problem, that's the one to go for. Period. <laughs> That, that that's there's no that, that is the one what the victor Ar, victoria do we know prima yes. yes yeah why because it's got all of the all of the things you want and it's actually quite uh and it looks great mm. yeah it's got those control it's got uh um double boiler uh, dual boiler actually is another double boiler so it's got dual boiler it's been it's been engineered for that the the um, the group head is elect- electronically heated as well it's 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 a no-brainer if money is not a problem but because uh, the only Which would you buy would you buy that if, if the same amount of money you know one of those is about mm-hmm. the same i think as, as the lamazoko is the same uh, uh, no i wouldn't buy that Lamazoko. it's too it's too too much um no it's about the same isn't it too much of uh, the uh, uh, the linear no, mini. too much yeah it's too much machine I, i'm not really no i, I would prefer the victoria arduino mm-hmm. uh, i would actually be torn between that and the um, um decent ah the decent they're the similar yeah. prices i mean you're looking at well, 5, I have to pay import pounds. tax now on it but yeah yeah i mean you're looking at five thousand pounds for the for the decent and uh, what four and a half for the Victoria Duino? You know, a decent would suit you, Max, because um, it's so sci- it's scientific. You'd be there pouring over the extraction graphs all the time. You'd you'd love too it. much. I think it's too much. I think it deducts from uh, from from what you actually do. It's uh, in cert- for certain things you don't need such levels of complication. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree. Look, for me, I don't like the way it looks, actually. I know a lot of people love the way it looks. And, no, it's um, ugly. For it's me, it looks like an like old... Like a slow-motion train wreck. It looks like uh, it looks like there's old PCs. You know, you used to yeah. get the, the mini cases. Like the, I think mm-hmm. what he did was he got a, a, uh, he got a group discount. <laughs> he bought, got a bulk purchase discount on old PC cases and put them in. Mm-hmm. I've actually seen one um, without the cover. It's very clever inside, and it's uh, it's got a lot of things that that I would put in a coffee machine, it, it, just to to target certain a certain crowd that uh, that is not me. Well, you know, I, I watch his videos and I hear him talking. He actually comes across like a really decent guy. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> I didn't yeah. mean to say that, but no, yeah, he comes across like um like he's he's um he's really so passionate about what he's doing, and absolutely, uh, I'm, absolutely, I'm so glad the industry has got somebody like him in it. Just not for absolutely. Me. I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm not even debating that. Absolutely, it's it's an incredibly good machine. I mean, I mean, it's it's literally it's an extraction system. It's a chromatogra- chromatography extraction system, basically, to make coffee. Yeah. The thing is, I use chromatography all day, every day. I don't want to wake up and do and do work. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I want to wake up and do some art. Yeah. Not latte God. art. No, not a lot of art. We just we want to. The art is going to be expressed in our espresso. Oh, mm-hmm. that is like a little tagline there somewhere. <laughs> Express your espresso. Eh, I don't know somewhere. Express uh, yourself. E- espresso yourself. Um, so <laughs> that was we we yeah. I was gonna. I'm just gonna dig a hole and hide in it now. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, okay, so we've got the, we've got the list done. Tell you what, if you've got any other ones that come to your mind, drop me a line and let me know, Max. Um, yes. Otherwise, to, next week, uh, cross our hearts and, 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 and not hope to die, but cross our hearts, we will, and little pinky finger promises, we will um, we, we, we will do. We'll talk about ECM. We'll talk about ECM minute. next week. But I, I really wanted to share those, um, those Nespresso uh, Bam, and Bambino type stories because... You know, they're, 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 they're stuff I was just doing today. So I wanted to <laughs> pass that on. All right, my friend, you have a great weekend. It's a beautiful you day. Do. Are you going to go outside and catch some sun? Uh, no, I think I'm going to, I'm going to pass for now. It's miserable. 
Yeah. All right. I'll talk to you <laughs> later, Max. <laughs> right. See you.